Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless each and every single one of you at this Hunter's Point here with another video. I do hope and pray that you all have a good Wednesday night so far, wherever you all are at. I do hope and pray that each of you are all doing well. Wanted to come on here and give you all a news update on some news that broke about an hour and a half ago. I'm not going to waste any time here. I'm going to get straight into the news. This is your one article world news update for the 29th of November, 2023. Uh, this article will be linked in the description box below as per the usual. It is off of APnews.com. Well-known globalist Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State for Presidents Nixon and Ford, has died at the age of 100. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, the diplomat with the thick glasses and gravelly voice who dominated foreign policy as the United States extricated itself from Vietnam and broke down barriers with China, died on Wednesday, as consulting firm said. He was 100 years old. With his gruff yet commanding presence and behind-the-scenes manipulation of power, it's key word there, manipulation of power, Kissinger exerted uncommon influence on global affairs under Presidents Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford, earning both vilification as well as the Nobel Peace Prize. Decades later, his name still provoked impassioned debate over foreign policy landmarks that had long passed. Kissinger's power grew during the turmoil of Watergate, when the politically attuned diplomat assumed a role that was akin to co-president to the weakened Richard Nixon. Quote, no doubt my vanity was piqued, Kissinger later wrote of his expanding influence, quote, but the dominant emotion was a premonition of catastrophe, unquote. A Jew who fled Nazi Germany with his family in his teens, Kissinger in his later years cultivated the reputation of respected statesmen, giving speeches, offering advice to Republicans and Democrats alike, and managing a global consulting business. Noticing a pattern here? Very, very much involved in global affairs. He turned up in President Donald Trump's White House on multiple occasions. But Nixon-era documents and tapes, as they trickled out over the years, brought forth with it revelations, many in Kissinger's own words, that sometimes cast him in a harsh light. Never without his detractors, Kissinger, after he left government, was dogged by critics who argued that he should be called to account for his policies on Southeast Asia and support of repressive regimes in Latin America. For eight restless years, first as National Security Advisor, later as Secretary of State, and for a brief time in the middle holding both titles, Kissinger ranged across the breadth of major foreign policy issues. He conducted the first shuttle diplomacy in the quest for Middle East peace. He used secret channels to pursue ties between the United States and China, ending decades of isolation and mutual hostility. He initiated the Paris negotiations that ultimately provided a face-saving means, a decent interval, he called it, to get the United States out of a costly war in Vietnam. Two years later, Saigon fell to the communists. And he pursued a policy of dentante with the Soviet Union that led to arms control agreements and raised the possibility that the tensions of the Cold War and its nuclear threat did not have to last forever. At age 99, he was still out on tour for his book on leadership, asked in July 2022 in an interview with ABC whether he wished that he could take back any of his decisions. Kissinger demurred, saying, quote, I've been thinking about these problems all my life. It's my hobby as well as my occupation. And so the recommendations I made were the best of which I was then capable, unquote. Even then, he had mixed thoughts on Nixon's record saying, quote, his foreign policy has held up, and he was quite effective in domestic policy, unquote, while allowing that the disgraced president had, quote, permitted himself to be involved in a number of steps that were inappropriate for a president, unquote. As Kissinger turned 100 in May of this year, his son David wrote in the Washington Post that his father's centenary might have an air of inevitability for anyone familiar with his force of character and love of historical symbolism. Not only has he outlived most of his peers, eminent detractors, and students, but he has also remained indefatigably active throughout his 90s, unquote. 
Asked during a CBS interview in the lead-up to his 100th birthday about those who view his conduct of foreign policy over the years as a kind of criminality, Kissinger was nothing but dismissive. Go figure. Quote, that's a reflection of their ignorance, Kissinger said. Of course he would say that. Quote, it wasn't conceived that way. It wasn't conducted that way, unquote. Sure. Kissinger continued his involvement in global affairs even in his last months. He met Chinese leader Xi Jinping in Beijing back in July, as bilateral relations were at a low point. And 50 years after his shuttle diplomacy helped end the 1973 Mideast War, when Israel fended off a surprise attack from Egypt and Syria, Kissinger warned of the risks of that conflict repeating itself after Israel faced a surprise assault by Hamas back on October the 7th. Tributes for Kissinger from prominent U.S. officials poured in immediately upon word of his death. Former President George W. Bush said the U.S., quote, lost one of the most dependable and distinctive voices on foreign affairs, unquote. And former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg said Kissinger was, quote, endlessly generous with the wisdom gained over the course of an extraordinary life, unquote. Kissinger's consulting firm said he died at his home in Connecticut. Kissinger was a practitioner of real politic, using diplomacy to achieve practical objectives rather than advance lofty ideals. Supporters said his pragmatic bent served U.S. interests. Critics saw a rather Machiavellian approach that ran counter to democratic ideals. He was castigated for authorizing telephone wiretapes of reporters and his own National Security Council staff to plug news leaks in Nixon's White House. He was denounced on college campuses for the bombing and allied invasion of Cambodia back in April of 1970 intended to destroy North Vietnamese supply lines to communist forces in South Vietnam. That incursion, as Nixon and Kissinger called it, was blamed by some for contributing to Cambodia's fall into the hands of Khmer Rouge insurgents, who later slaughtered some two million Cambodians. Kissinger, for his part, made it his mission to debunk what he referred to in 2007 as a prevalent myth, that he and Nixon had settled in 1972 for peace terms that had been available in 1969 and thus had needlessly prolonged the Vietnam War at the cost of tens of thousands of American lives. He insisted that the only way to speed up the withdrawal would have been to agree to Hanoi's demands that the U.S. overthrow the South Vietnamese government and replace it with communist-dominated leadership. Pudgy and messy, Kissinger incongruously acquired a reputation as a ladies' man in the staid Nixon administration. Kissinger, who had divorced his first wife in 1964, called women a diversion, a hobby. Jill St. John was a frequent companion, but it turned out his real love interest was Nancy McGinn's, a researcher for Nelson Rockefeller, another globalist, whom he married in 1974. So I'm not going to read the rest of this article. It'll be linked below for those who do want to go through, read it themselves, read the entire thing from beginning to end. But that is the news. Henry Kissinger, well-known globalist and former Secretary of State for Presidents Nixon and Ford, has died at his home in Connecticut here this evening at the age of 100. So that will conclude your news update for the 29th of November, 2023 going to go ahead and pull up eSword, which is my online digital Bible program, and we're going to go ahead and conclude this video with the gospel presentation. Let me make sure this is all the way up. We'll go to 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. This is the saving gospel message. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Here's the emphasized portion. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, the good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. That right there is how you are saved if you believe that in your heart alone. 
Okay, it is not by your own ability to do good works or good deeds that you are saved. It is by your faith in Christ alone that you are saved. It's really that simple. Jesus Christ did all the work. All you have to do is believe in him. Trust that he did that work for you and that it was enough to save you. There is nothing you can do apart from faith to be saved. Faith in Christ alone is what saves and seals you with that Holy Spirit of promise. It's Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. It is that simple. Right? Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, the second part of the Trinity. He died on the cross, shedding his precious purifying blood for the remission of all mankind's sins. That's past, present, and future sins. They were all covered and washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, for our justification and therefore our salvation. Okay, Jesus Christ did it all. He offered up his shed blood for us. And all you have to do is trust in that blood. Faith in his saving, purifying blood. That alone is what saves you. I'm going to read John 3, verses 16 through 18, as I believe that they tie in beautifully with the saving gospel message. John 3, verses 16 through 18 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus did it all. He did the work. All you have to do is believe in him. Place your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone for your salvation and eternal security, and you will be saved. It is that simple. It is that simple. I pray that if there are any non-believers who are watching this video right now, I pray that you'd believe on Christ alone now while you still have that chance. Right? Because you never know your expiration date. You never know when you'll wake up one day and it'll be your last day. You have no clue. You have no clue how long you're going to be spending living your earthly life on this planet. So believe me when I say, you do not want to die in a state of unbelief. You want to believe on Christ alone while you have that chance. And I pray you do that. Because it really is as simple as that. As believing in Jesus Christ. Trusting in his death, burial, and resurrection that served as the complete payment for all your past, present, and future sins. You believe in that alone. You've placed your faith and trust in that alone. You're saved. Simple as that really is as simple as that. So I pray for any non-believers who may be watching this video, please believe in Jesus. Please believe in Jesus Christ alone now before it's too late. Because one day, it will be too late. <laughs> as long as you're living and you're breathing, you got a chance. But as that old saying goes, you only live once, right? Well, as far as your earthly life, that is true. You only live once. Then you move on to an eternal destination. It's either going to be a place of eternal paradise or it's going to be that other place. And you don't want to go to that other place. All right, so I'm going to finish this by reading Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, which says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We know that grace, by definition, is getting what we don't deserve, which God has offered to us as the free gift of salvation. And we accept and receive that free gift once and for all, past, present, and future, by faith alone, in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. I pray that you all believe on Christ alone today, if you have not. All right, that is where I'm going to leave you all off at here for this news update. I will see you all in the next video, whenever it is, should the Lord tarry is coming. Otherwise, God bless you all. All right, take care.